Welcome back to another beautiful sunny day out here in Vasiliki, over on the west coast of Greece. Where today I'm going to answer, it's a classic intermediate or beginner, progressing intermediate sort of discussion and question. And that's when and why should we get rid of the daggerboard? And what effect will that happen on our sailing and the way that we cruise around? That's what I'm going to be chatting through in the next few minutes. Quite useful for, yeah, progressing intermediates, progressing beginners, becoming intermediates as well as the instructors teaching them and the little secrets that the instructors have got that maybe the, instru the, maybe the students aren't quite aware of. So the dagger board is this extra fin that we have in the center of the board. And all beginner boards use it, all the large, stable beginner boards. It creates lateral resistance, stops us drifting sideways as a beginner, Helps it helps us go upwind. It's much easier to sail upwind with the centerboard in the board. And also makes it a lot more stable. As soon as you lose that daggerboard, the resistance in the water has gone a bit and the board becomes a lot more wobbly. However, beginners and intermediates start looking at the board rack quite quickly, trying to work out what's the next board. That one's got nice design, that's got nice colors. And you'll notice that fairly quickly, there's no more centerboards. There's no more daggerboards in those boards. And that's because when you start going faster, the daggerboard and the fin accidentally work together or deliberately start to do what they should be doing, which is creating lift. And the trouble is the daggerboard creates too much uncontrollable lift and you can't control at all what's going on. You end up daggerboard planing, which is not particularly nice. So as you start going in stronger winds and as you start getting better, you're going to want to get rid of that daggerboard. But things change when you lose the daggerboard. Things become slightly different. kind of touched on why or when you might change, but just to elaborate a bit more on when. Once a beginner or a low intermediate is getting control of the rig, can sail around, not a course necessarily, but can definitely sail upwind nicely, and is starting to want to get in some stronger winds, it's a good time to start losing the daggerboard. It's good to practice on the board you're used to. Right now, this is a Viper 80. It's a Fanatic Viper, a classic beginner and low intermediate board. It's 190 liters. And you can see between my feet down here, just in front or behind my back foot, is the handle for the daggerboard. And you should just about, there it goes, be able to kick that daggerboard out the way, hopefully without needing to stop. You might find that some of these have a bit of sand or crust or something caught in between them. It might take you to stop and use your hands, but ideally, like that, it'd be great if you can kick it forwards and backwards. And that gives you a chance to stick with what you know, stay in your comfort zone, I like this board, I'm stable on this board, and play with or without the daggerboard. With or without the daggerboard, to sail up wind, and this is the, the never-ending quest as a, as a windsurfer, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner or an advanced windsurfer, sailing up wind is a never-ending quest. And our vision, looking where you want to go to maintain your sailing line, upwind, with my head, shoulders, hips, and my front foot, is important. The bit that changes though, when you lose that daggerboard, not just the stability, but the way that the trim affects where you're going. The balance on the board. So without a daggerboard, we need to stand, like I am now, on the heel edge or the windward edge of the board. Trying to get your ankles just that little bit wet or the, the water against your toes. And that will create the lateral resistance that you've previously lost. When the center board is in though, when the center board is in the water, if I stand on this windward edge, the board actually goes the other way, it takes me downwind. So with the center board in, and this is why the instructors are always saying, stand on the center line, the beginners tend to accidentally start pushing their toes a bit. But tilting that board slightly to leeward, to the opposite side of the board to the wind, the toe edge side of the board, that's how you get up wind with a dagger board on. Old school racers with those center boards on their boards will know this and there'll be a lot of toe pressure, possibly even feet together pressing on the heel edge, sorry, pressing on the toe edge of the board to really pinch that board upwind.
it's a key one for us to realize as we become better windsurfers, the vision doesn't change. Look where you want to go to maintain that line, but the trim, a flat board is fast board from front to back, but if you want to go upwind, you need to stand on that heel edge of the board. You need to engage the windward rail and like I am now, this is now bringing me back up wind. Something to be aware of as you start changing your kit and playing around with the center boards or no center boards is generally like the Viper or a starboard Rhino or a starboard Rio or a Primo or any of the other classic beginner boards that you might be using. Generally, the fin at the back is pretty small. When you change onto your first, let's call it large intermediate board, whatever you've got that's 180, 160, 150 liters, and you're no longer using a center board, generally those fins are massive. 40, 50, possibly even 60 centimeters, huge fins. And the fin helps to create that lateral resistance, helps the board go upwind when you're standing on the windward rail, and stops you drifting away sideways. The summary of that is it's actually harder to sail upwind on this 190 litre board or the big beginner boards with small fins than it is to sail on your smaller board because of the larger fin. It's a bit of a generalization, but if I take the surface area of the center board and the fin on the board I'm currently on, it'll pretty much match the board you can see on screen right now, which is a 161 starboard go. That's the next board that I'd have my beginners progressing into intermediates start trying to sail on. So although the board is more wobbly, because you've lost 20 or 30 liters, you might find that once you've got it moving, you've got a bit of wind in your sail, it's actually a lot easier to sail up wind on those boards when you lose the center board. Which kind of answers, when is it time to change boards? You know what, actually I can sail up wind okay on, let's call it a beginner board, a large stable platform with the small fin and the center board available to me, then it's time to progress on the other one. Try something a bit smaller, try something a little bit smaller, but because of that extra fin, you'll have some more stability and find it a little bit easier to point up wind. You can see just now I've popped in my center board back into the water once again. I've got a lot of toe edge pressure, Actually, this is helping me drive up wind nicely. This is the classic light wind longboard racing stance. Two feet together, pressing with my toes. The other thing to bear in mind when you're playing around with a center board or no center board is if you're learning to jibe, you'll be asked to step back and step across the board as we come through the jibes. If you're struggling with your jibes, it might be worth kicking the center board out the way if you haven't already. The center board's in the water, the balance is the wrong way around. I'm pushing the sail to the outside, my body weight is on the inside, the board is effectively carving, even in this light winds, to bring me through the turn. If that center board was in the water, the board would be trying to take me the wrong direction. And the sail and the steering of the board are fighting against each other effectively. So if you are learning to jibe and progressing your jibes, it's definitely worth getting rid of that dagger board. If you are on a board like me where I can kick it in and out of the water freely, that would definitely help you out a bit. So there we have it. Don't feel pressured to jump on a smaller and smaller board too quickly. I've said this in a number of the films just now, is that it's nice to get on something a little bit smaller, start realizing how you can steer with your feet as well as the rig, how they work very well together. And I've got a, a new video coming on that one very soon about foot steering and the effects it has with our foot pressure. But for now, just have a little think about whether or not you're gonna use your dagger board, lose the dagger board, or possibly even lose a few liters in your board to gain that extra surface area on the fin. Thanks for joining me. Time for a spot of lunch just now. The forecast is looking amazing for this afternoon, so I'm pretty sure we're going to have some nice strong winds to play in. And I've got a couple of guys joining me from Athens for a clinic this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to that one. I'll see you back here very soon. Thank you.